Recently, I came across an article in 35mm Photography magazine published in the spring of 1970. Six photographic industry leaders predict the future of photography, specifically what will be seen in the 1970s. I found the idea fascinating because here we are almost 50 years later and we can look back and see if and when any of these theories came to pass. Hello, my name is Azrael Knight, and in this episode of TOC Extra, we take a look at photographers' predictions of the 1970s. First up, W. Frederick Wilson. There is no doubt about it. Silver is on the way out, says Wilson, stating that the increasing cost of silver will drive new markets. Wilson references a Kodak engineer that explains that silver acts as an amplifier when light strikes the emulsion. Wilson theorizes, perhaps the film can be coated with an electrical conducting surface and when a charge is applied to the film, the needed amplification would be achieved. When I first read this, I was floored. Wilson is basically describing in so many words a digital sensor. The way he goes about the prediction does stray from what we know as digital technology, but he does say, just imagine a film that does not require light type packaging. Wilson surmises that the camera would not need a shutter and processing would not require any water. Instead, the film would be pulled through a static electric machine removing uncharged particles. Wilson also describes a replacement of the aperture with a neutral polarizing system of some sorts, but where he gets really close to home is where he says, Autofocusing is another dream of the not too distant future. Perhaps the most accurate prediction of all, in my mind, it is gonna be easier to achieve a picture of good technical quality with less and less knowledge of photography. Camera and film manufacturers look toward electronics, the only way to take a picture. Our next photo psychic is the younger brother of Robert Kappa, Cornell Kappa. Kappa begins with a rather drawn out statement of how photography can be split into categories and it's all rather philosophical, but one thing he does say is unplanned obsolescence will continue rampant. New camera systems will be born without much advance notice by various parents, each one more automated than its predecessors. Kappa also predicted an ever increasing demand for the still image in books, magazines, television, and the like. Kappa's take on the future is an interesting one because it looks more into the social aspects of what photography does to us, good and bad, as a society. Because many pictures are being taken today, no one is really interested in what has gone on before. Man's witness of his own times dies with him. Dark but accurate, Kappa also stresses the moral obligation photographers have to use the camera as a tool of social conscience. My favorite prediction from him is this. There are many techniques for producing a whole 30 minute or hour long show with visual and ideal continuity, making visual storytelling a very exciting reality. Electronic video recording will make every home set the stage of a cartridge visual voice presentation. Kappa, though not entirely accurate for specifically the 1970s, makes some scary conclusions if the predictions were for the 21st century. Bob Schwalberg is a name familiar to me as I have quoted several of his articles in popular photography over the years. Pictures will be about the same as ever. Cameras and lenses will change, but not much. Fairly accurate here depending on your perspective. But some of the cameras released in the late 70s, like the AE-1 and the ME Super, were amazing leaps forward. Existing hardware is becoming increasingly difficult to change significantly, much less to improve. As a result, designers are faced with the difficult task of adapting new ideas to fit camera bodies whose lens mounts, auto aperture mechanisms, and critical dimensions were determined a long time ago. Many of us are keenly aware of this problem whenever a smartphone changes a plug or completely removes it. Canon was probably the most famous for this in the late 1980s when they abandoned their previous mount for the EF mount and EOS system. Nathan Lyons said, perhaps the greatest transition that will take place in photography during the 1970s will be in terms of its audience. Activity involving the picture book, exhibition, the growth of photographic centers, as well as public collections will be expanded greatly. 
While this isn't the most exciting of predictions, it's accurate. The 1970s and 80s were a huge leaping off point for photography, as more everyday people started picking up cameras themselves and researching famous photographers and their work. Director of famous photographer school at the time, Goldsmith, had this to say, Giant electron microscopes are being conducted now that will, via photographic image, enable us to see into the architecture of atoms. Other cameras orbiting the Earth or probing into space will record new data about the universe and reveal unsuspected cosmic events. Microfilm linked to computerized retrieval systems will be indispensable to the archives of the 70s and picture researchers will be able to dial a picture for desktop delivery through a telephone printer. I found this quote quite interesting because it's so right and so wrong all at once. Goldsmith seemed to know where things were going, but just not as early as the 70s. Goldsmith predicted loop films and plug-in cartridges for TV, records that play pictures, home facsimile units, and the first audiovisual magazine of the electronic age. Just so we're clear, that's the VCR, the CDR, the modern printer, and the iPad. I probably like Goldberg's predictions the most because they're very specific. Let's go through a few. Meters may be used in cameras for the sole purpose of informing the photographer what the light level exposure controls read. Built-in presentation lights, coupled with improved emulsions, will enable the photographer to sail forth with one type of film that will handle practically any type of lighting situation at shutter speeds that will ensure handheld shots. I would say this is accurate, though he also said we'd get 50 shots a roll. We did see an increase in ASA through the 70s and 80s, as well as finer grain. Goldberg also predicted a max shutter speed of 1 over 4000 and a top sync speed of 1 over 250, which we easily have today on many cameras. Here's an odd one. Goldberg predicts that self-timers will disappear. I think he means as a separate device attachment rather than integrated. The self-timer was largely integrated into cameras and almost all of them have one today, so in a way he was right. The PC outlet will be declared illegal by the UN Commission on Bad Things. This is hilarious because especially considering modern DSLRs still have them. Kodak will abandon their present cardboard tube packaging and go with a plastic bottle hinged with snap lid, which will serve beautifully as a storage container for the developed roll. The color will be yellow, it will be airtight, you'll be able to write on it, hey Kodak, are you listening? Yes, Norman, they were. Polaroid's new 35 mm slide process will generate tremendous interest. After reading two books on Edwin Land and the history of Polaroid, I can tell you that that one is a giant no. This has been a fascinating look back into what 1960s photographers thought the industry would be like in the decade ahead. You could tell that they knew that convenience would drive the consumer over quality, and that's kind of the way things went. A lot of the time they had it pretty close too when it came to technical advances. I was impressed many of it did happen, just not in the 70s. I think during this time we had a very optimistic view of how fast we'd advance. Autofocus cameras by 1973, flying cars by 1990. <laughs> That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.